go. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison, and joining me today is Amanda. Hello. We're both safe at home, and we hope that you are too. I know we've been staying safe at home for a while, and I'm starting to go a little bit stir crazy. How about you? Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of that. I'm like bribing the cat to hang out with me, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I know I've been looking for some different things to do at home. And one of the things that I found that I love to do is I love to be a stay at home scientist. Mm. So when I think about being a scientist, I start to wonder what a scientist does or what a scientist is. Is it someone who works in a lab? Do they always wear a lab coat? Do they always use microscopes and scientific tools? Are they always someone who does an experiment or could I be a scientist? <laughs> and I realized that scientists are people who are curious about the world around them. So we can all be scientists at home. So today we're going to talk about some ways that we can study nature that we can find around us. Awesome. So we're going to look at a picture of some of the five basic needs that animals have. Let's bring this over. Sorry, you don't have the best navigator today. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Awesome. So I love this picture because I love monkeys and primates. I think they're super fun and they don't live here, but other animals that do live here need the exact same things that those monkeys need. Mm -hmm. All living things need air, water, food, shelter, and space. Mm -hmm. And as long as you can find those things or an animal can find those things, then those animals can live there. So that means if we can find those around our home, we can have wildlife living right in our own backyards. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting to think about. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to talk about how to be a scientist. So scientists use something called the scientific method. So we're gonna see a picture of what that looks like. It's a lot of lines leading lots of different places. And we're going to focus on the first step today. And that first step is making observations. We all make observations all the time. We're using all of our senses and our senses are the best tools that we have to help us make observations. So we're gonna look at a picture of our five of our senses so that we can figure out which ones are going to be the most useful for us <laughs> as we're exploring outside. So we all have a sense of vision, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. And my sense of taste is probably my favorite sense. I love all the snacks I've been eating. I've been eating a lot of lemon cookies lately. <laughs> there's, there's been some baking, I'll admit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but our sense of taste is one we do not use very often when we're exploring outside. <laughs> do, please don't taste the nature. So. Yes. Do you not want to taste the nature? <laughs> Another sense that we don't use very often when we're exploring our, our outside and nature is our sense of touch. Mm. Sometimes there are things that we want to touch that definitely don't want us to touch them. And there are some plants that are very unhappy about being touched. Mm -hmm. um, I know my brother was doing some yard work and he got some very bad poison ivy. Because <laughs> he touched the wrong plant. Be a part. Right? <laughs> so the three main senses we use when we explore are probably outside are probably our sense of smell, our sense of hearing, and our sense of sight or vision. And our sense of hearing and vision are the big two that we want to use. Um, so we're going to start out talking about our sense of hearing and why it is so important. First of all, when we're listening, we're not making much noise, which means we can see some pretty cool things around us. The quieter we are, the more we see, um, the more that nature doesn't think we're there, the more things we're going to see animals and plants doing, which is pretty cool. So the first, so we're going to look at a picture of an animal that lives in Ohio that many of us don't get to see very often. And this is a mink. So this is Jinx. Jinx is an American mink. He is one of our education ambassadors and he is scientifically adorable. So we love to look at him. 
pictures of him. Uh, minks are cousins of otters and weasels, and they like to live by the water. They're carnivores, so they eat meat, which means that they have to hunt. So they have a great sense of sight, a great sense of smell, and an amazing sense of hearing. <laughs> that sense of hearing means they hear us coming well before we get a chance to see them. Even when we're at our quietest, we are, um, which is not what my birds are doing right now. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. They are. They're having a great time. <laughs> when we're at our quietest, we're making a lot of noise. We crunch sticks. We crunch rocks. All of those things. And that makes noise that scares animals away. But if we're really, really quiet, sometimes we get a special treat. So we have a special treat for you today of, mink, of Jinx, our mink, getting a fish as a special treat. You can see they're excellent swimmers. Look at that fur. Don't touch that, that's his. <laughs> yeah, so they are excellent swimmers, and you can see that he has very thick fur, and that fur helps to keep him dry. So as soon as he gets out of the water, he shakes it right off, all the water comes off, and then he can run inside of his, his cat tower that someone gave him, um, which he's very excited about. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to practice listening, and this is something you can do at home. You can do it outside, which is my favorite place to do just about anything, or you can do it inside. You can hear some surprising things, um, maybe some things you didn't know made noise. So what I like to do is I like to be quiet for two minutes and think and try and list everything that uh, I hear. So we have a little video of outside um, and we'll try doing that all together. Okay, hey, is this tree or Allison? This is a tree, sorry. <laughs> we are both outside. <laughs> okay, ready? Mm hmm Okay. Two minutes feels like an eternity, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> <laughs> 
so you can hear so many different things. Yeah. In that video, you could hear robins. Um, you could hear, I think there were some Canada geese that flew over. And in the background was my favorite sound of all of spring. And that is a spring peeper. Quite. They're little tiny frogs. We have a little video of them so you can see what they look like. They're very small, about the size of a pinky fingernail. All right, ready? Mm hmm They're so loud for being so small. <laughs> I know sometimes when we leave the exploration gateway, when we're driving down the long driveway to get back out onto the road, it can be impossible to hear anything else but the spring peepers in the spring. Yes. Very loud. So loud. And only half of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. It's only the males that are making the noise. So now that we're expert listeners, we can move on to using our sense of sight, which is one of, it's probably my favorite. I like to hear animals, but I like to see them much more often. <laughs> um, so it's really easy to look outside and think that there's nothing there. I know I live in an apartment. So when I look out into my little green space, I just see grass and I don't think that anything's there most of the time. But sometimes if we look just a little bit closer, you'll be amazed at what you can find. So I'm going to, I took a video when it was nice and not raining outside um, so that we could show you how to do a tiny hike. A tiny hike is one of my favorite tools to use um, to explore a small space. So we'll see the tiny hike video. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. I've been outside using my sense of hearing to make some observations about the animals that are around me. Right now, I hear a blue jay making a noise. I hear some uh, chickadees, some cardinals, lots of different birds singing in the trees around me. But the next thing I want to do is I want to see some wildlife. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a tiny hike. A tiny hike is one of my favorite tools to help me explore a small space. It helps me to see things in an area that maybe I wasn't thinking about looking in before. So to do a tiny hike, you're going to need one thing, and that is a boundary. That boundary can be absolutely anything. I like to use either a string or a ribbon, some kind of fabric that I can lay on the ground or put in a tree somewhere, uh, anything that gives me an area to help me explore. Another fun way to do a tiny hike is if you happen to have a hula hoop, you can take a hula hoop and you can throw it in your yard somewhere. And then you explore inside of that hula hoop. So if you have a hula hoop, I definitely recommend doing it that way. It's really fun. Um, but if you don't, you can absolutely use a string. I'm going to be using a ribbon here for mine. And all you have to do is find a spot in your yard that you want to explore. You can take that ribbon or that boundary, whatever you're using, a ribbon, a belt, a scarf, your hula hoop, anything, and set it on the ground somewhere. I'm going to set mine right here. Once you set that on the ground, give it a minute or so, so that little insects get used to that new thing being there. After that minute is up, then explore that area. See how many different things you can find. It doesn't matter if you know what species it is. Notice how one type of grass might look different from another blade of grass. See different shapes of leaves. See different insects crawling around. See if there's any spiders. You want to see as many different things as you can and write down your observations. Draw a picture. And that will help you explore in a really small area. You'll be amazed at all of the really cool things that you can find. 
So I know when I did my tiny hike, I was pretty surprised to find that there were five different kinds of plants in the grass and two bugs and one jumping spider. And it was pretty early in the spring, so I was really excited about it. So it'll be interesting to see what I find out there yeah. as time goes by. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna change. I love my jumping spiders though. Fuzzy little. Oh, they're so cute. I love them. <laughs> so now I want to invite you to go outside and try using those new skills that we worked on. Try using your sense of hearing. See you listen to, to find out what you can hear. Um, and see what you can see, maybe doing your own tiny hike. Let us know what you discover. I want to thank Amanda for being our amazing navigator and for being here with us today. And I want to thank you for watching. Have so much fun exploring your backyard. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye.